And this is one of my old larches. Now that's from that 1970 bunch. And I hollowed it out years ago and uh, and then it I looks, opened it up again because it, it closed. It's so natural. It's amazing. You would you would swear that there's no human manipulation yeah. well, thank after you. all that aging, you know, after the carving and the aging. It's it's it's, good. it's just delightful. Feels that great. is a really nice tree. Yeah, I see now that, that really I've got about two inches of moss on there that should come off. Yeah. <laughs> the moss here. Oh, I didn't show you. I got to show you an example of how I grow moss. Moss that just kind of <laughs> takes care of some of my maples for me. It's just actually, this is an air layered branch off the bottom of that tree, so really? it's about six inches up. This is a tsunami uh, western red cedar from off the coast down there. Came off a big old rock down there years wow. ago. Amazing. So, here's a question that I think is a uh, good question to ask is how much of every week? For how long did you spend simply searching and collecting material? Because you've got a huge amount of material in here. Oh, yeah. It didn't just find its way here. Here's I just, you know, I worked one day and I was off too. You know, I was a fireman. Uh -huh. And if you take one shift off, you got five days. Okay. And with that income, I was still doing landscaping, but you know, I've just always been busy. You know, the whole thing is stay busy. So you, so you did a lot of this during your working life, oh, you yeah. in your free time. Yeah. Okay. And now, yeah. now, this dead stump, it was here. No, I brought it in. You brought it in? Yeah. Same thing with that one. See, this is an old garbage dump. So this is just a landfill. Right. So I brought, in, I brought in 35,000 yards of dirt to build the garden. Because there wasn't anything here. And if you dig, you're into cans and bottles. So <laughs> all of this is a depleted. This came from Nick Lamb. Mm -hmm. and it was about this big. How did you get that from Nick? How did oh, you pry it, it out of him? No, he he had this stuff at his house uh, in Leverett. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, um, and of course, I was a bonsai kind of guy, and I told yeah. him I'd love to have one of these larches. And here was this one that he thought it was about this big. But it had that neat uh, kink. Bird in it. The kink yeah. And the trouble is that the kink has gotten so fat. That you're going to lose the kink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have to do a bunch of carving on here to open this up because you're beginning to lose, lose it. To lose lose sight of it. Yeah, yeah. Were you down at the show in, in California? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the problem with that big pine of, you know, that wasn't the best of show. As, as it is that that knot is just kind of undiscernible as where the trunk went, which would be nice to kind of yeah, see that. Yeah, how angles become curves. Yeah, yeah. It's quite yeah. thickening. Yeah. So, um, you know, just kind of stuff. Here's the size of this pond. Here, we were talking about the other day, how the leaflets are more oppressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a bald type, and you can see the needles. Yeah. And this you can. This is real, to my eye, this is the typical conversation for an Over the years, it'll turn into knees. I don't you know. You can dig them off and yeah. start new, new types of Well, you have to graft them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's it's white down there in the pond, cypress, and some neat stuff. Who else is getting them going with the balloon? Oh, my son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can do a lot of that. Yeah. 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 Most of this stuff I don't have to worry about at all. What do you do with your cascade? Well, I don't have any that, um, um, but I'll stand them up usually. 
Like if I had to put that on the ground, I might tip it over on its side. Yeah, yeah. And just just give it some protection. But then the rain doesn't get into that. Top well, yeah, much. but it's, it's just. Uh, oh, you just leave it down yeah. for a little bit. See, now here's the last yellow cedar. It's trained uh, like a juniper. Yes. Instead of the fluffy stuff. Yeah. But in that summer. And the natural dead snag top. This is an ancient tree, but it had this long trunk that went underground. <laughs> but it had layered. Fortunately, yeah. Fortunately, yeah. So. Amazing. So these are, uh, well, you know, what these are. That's a, a favorite old mountain hemlock. I've had that thing for 60 years and hollowed it all out. And, and I, the one thing that I've learned is you don't want to take the bark off of mountain hemlock branches when they're dead because the bark is what makes it durable. Oh, really? So the wood will rot. So I can go up on those old branches and twang them like this. And they're, But if I would have taken the bark off like we do to coat really? the dead wood, really? then it just gets flimsy. Oh, really? So the wood isn't nearly as durable as the bark. That's a Nishiki uh, black pine yes, all the that. way, even the roots. Oh, really? Even the roots? Yeah. Really? So yeah. it's kind of, but it's a one-sided root system, and I think it all works. This, this, this is one that I grew from the city of Concordia. Oh, I love this. It. The movement. Yeah, the trunk movement. It's gorgeous. I thought a guy ought to have a formal cascade, and that's the end. That's a formal cascade. <laughs> What is it? If the top winds up directly over the base of the tree, you got a formal cascade. That is a nice one. Very nice. And just as a, an interesting uh, sideline on this is, um, uh, well, I got to show you something really special. Because this is the essence of a whole bunch of stuff. So um, the whole thing is three dies. Because the roots get too long. And so there's a normal life expectancy on this. And so here's an ancient juniper snake in Wyoming. And from right here, in there, this was the original tree. Really? Okay. It grew up to yeah. four or five hundred years. Then it was running out of water because the roots had gotten too long. It died down. This branch grew for 3,000 years, and it grew gnarly. It didn't grow straight. You remember that straight thing? Right. You know, young trees are doing this. Right. The tree goes up to a point, it's a baby. Right. Okay. Wow. So I'll show you several of those. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, so here's an ancient western red cedar. With the bark, you know, the vertical top. Right. And it died. And then the new top grew, but it grew gnarly because it's short of water. All right. Okay. Got to keep moving along. Here's, here's one that's got that gnarly top. There's another juniper from, um, I don't know which one this is, but here was the original top. Okay. Yeah. Right in here. It died down, then this part grew, and it grew gnarly. <laughs> Two more. So here, here's my mimicking of that early on with a Hanoki cypress. Okay. So I killed the original top, yes. which was tall and straight. The only thing I didn't know is that the reiteration should be gnarly. And so I took it straight up. So I didn't, I hadn't perceived that yet as a reality on, on living trees that that should be a gnarly second top for the shorter water. This is, this is in my book. Hmm. Well, that's, picked this one, the pictures when I came out here that one time and we took pictures. Well, yeah. so this, trees. this exact yeah. tree is this in your book. This exact tree is in my book. Yeah. And so this is, is actually what I'm mimicking is the ancient one up on top of the hill. Okay? <laughs> so there's a 600 year old. Hey, Anthony. Here. There's a reiteration. You yes. see how all the branches are kind of are ratty up yes. there? Yes. Because yes. it's short of water. Yes. So the young trees here are all this graceful, upright, you know, like this thing behind it, it's grand fur here, yeah. and that kind of deal. So, anyhow, there's that. But then, uh,
juvenile shoot died down, then this branch grew, added 400 years, grew gnarly. Look at that tight foliage. Yeah. Oh, well, I, mean, I grabbed right, a chimpaka. Grab yeah. Okay, that's yeah. what. I just got chimpaka <laughs> ones. And the one behind you is the ancient tree in the garden. And it has the vertical top in there. In the back? On the right going straight up in the middle? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And then it added a 14 inch radius at 141 years per radial inch on an actual pound on it. And so it was growing in a crack and the, about 18 inches of rock had eroded. Yeah. Well, let me, this, this is worth recording. So this was the original top. Yes, and it I comes see it. and starts to curve, comes over to here. These were roots. This came out of a crack this much in the Seminole Mountains of solid rock, yes. crack this big. And when I found it, the tree had tipped over because this much rock had eroded away over the life of the tree and it had come to the bottom of the crack. And so the tree tipped over, it didn't die. But when it tipped over, two little tips then turned dramatically and grew towards the light, right? Phototropism, that's the bend in the trunk up there right so i found this thing it was laying down and then all the growth was coming this way and there were two of those and i cut one of them off and carved it and counted it and got the 141 years per radial inch and the tree had tipped over by counting that 153 years ago anyhow so to have roots here means the seed had to have sprouted here because what happens is the seed sprouts and it goes to where it's safe and then it lateralizes which means the rock had to have been to here. And this is an area where there's less than 12 inches of rainfall a year, and most of it falls as snow. And you know what happens to snow in cold country, it sublimates, right? Yes, yes, it vaporizes. Yes. So wh what happened to the rock, I have no idea, but the tree, none of the trees are windswept. And so maybe stone sublimates. <laughs> But anyhow, it's just a fabulous old thing. It is. And from here, the center line, which like you see it curves and goes right up into this original top. Yes. The live part is way over here. There's a strip of bark and that's a 14 inch radius around here. Amazing. Over to the center line. So it's just an old bird. So we're talking over a thousand years old here. Well, 2300 is what 2300, yeah. Well, well, David. Yes, sir. This is Anthony. And yes. this, yeah, we met at the this show. This is David yeah. too. Another yeah. David. Another David. All the good guys. But he's a David. Canadian David. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, and these David guys are our friends. And this is a son. And <laughs> this is my son Nick. And this is uh, Garrett. And yeah, Nicola has just become interested in bonsai. My son about a year and a half ago. Oh yeah. Where are you guys? From Montreal. Oh, Montreal. Fantastic city. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, one more, eastern white cedar. See the dead top on the top? Yes, yes, yes. And the gnarly second growth yes. that went on. So that's my, my story for the bonsai world, but it all comes from field observations of how ancient trees kind of evolve. You know, they, they die from the top down and the lower branches get gnarly because they're short of water. And well, I've learned a lot today with you. In fact, <laughs> Thank you so much for oh, for teaching me all of this. Really, you learn so much. I'm every just time. kind of an old fart, you know. No, you're, you're like a, a Bible, <laughs> a fount of knowledge. Well, yeah, thank no, you. Thank you so much. Well, I, sorry. That's what you do. Come on, we gotta you go. Got David's got this goddamn schedule. Yeah. Grand oh. hornbeam, mountain hemlock from snow loading. Well, Hugo um, pine. A couple of them. I don't know if this is a Hugo pine. I'm not really sure what it is. I think this is from Dave Dwyer. Oh. I'm not sure what it is. This guy here? Uh huh. I mean, uh, it looks kind of like a Hugo pine, but it doesn't look like it looks a Hugo pine. That's a really no, that's uh, a five needle. That's a really big graft. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's, it's, it's obviously grafted, but I, yeah. I, it might be some other kind of pine. Just a variety. I mean, there's so many varieties of Hugo now. This is um, fabulous lodgepole. It is a natural uh, air layer underground from up in the bogs oh. up there. And so 
there's an old trunk going out the other side and then it naturally layered and sent some roots out and then this part grew and uh, it's just a mixed up agenda but it's uh yeah that's one of my black pines yeah. with the proper needle length there you go <laughs> kind of makes some special yeah this is an old lodgepole from up in canada and planted on a lava rock no dispute over the trees on the rock it's a perfect <laughs> pot yeah this is a beautiful also pine black pine you really do such a good job with your decandling. I mean, they're all so short, your needles. I'm well, so impressed. They all just, you know, you want to prune it when it's weakest. You know, it's, you know, you see, you have a longer growing season. If we did that in mid-July, I don't think we'd get any new growth at all that well, year. Well, you get buds. Yeah, that's true. Another great hornbeam, lodgepole, another black pine with the... See, now the guy who pruned that with me missed a lot of the seeds. See how busy that are? How long the pruned are up above? <laughs> he didn't, uh, he got the bottom tree. He got the small tree. The small, yeah. I had the local plug come in. That was pretty fine. It's during July, so they all. And, and you cut all the candles. Yeah, right? I just did a strong one. Yeah, take them all. Every, every that's one. That's Camorra's theory, also. Well, you know, the, the, the thing, thing about it here is what I found was that um, if you like in Japan you would leave the, uh, the would leave one. the big ones cut the oh. weak ones first yes so they'd get Do a head start yeah. but with the, the climate as it is the new buds would appear after candle cutting within a week in a week you would see the juicy yeah. little green buds formed already right wow so that timeline made a difference well here with our cold summer nights it might be a month oh it's a slow or, thing or five yeah. weeks before you see I'll a do a bud the, the, I'll so, so what happens is the buds that are so small you don't even see them when you cut your candles yeah. Then they, they take off they, and then they got four inch needles yeah, on them. They yeah, bring them on so it's like a, yeah, see this was pruned on the 9th of July. You know, this this guy long. here. And so that's, those are too long. Okay. Whereas that one back there was the end of July. And they were, that right, one shorter. Right. And so, so it what a makes difference. a lot of difference. What a difference. These are my only two Scotch pines. Yes. And I don't pay too much attention to them, but I did have to log the moss off of this, it was four inches deep. Oh, on this thing here. This, this moss was up to here. And so I call it logging because I'm in there with my little scissors, and here's this vertical wall of stems going up to the little green puff. I took some pictures of it. It's, it just. That's wow. beautiful movement in that stuff. Yeah, I have. Beautiful. I'll never forget finding that, looking down in a gallon can, and seeing this little trunk coming up but a real gnarly thing at the bottom wow. and then i put it in the ground for 40 years and oh well that um, helps yeah 40 years <laughs> so i grow an occasional maple just in case someone really wants one i can just Rip it out. Rip it out and say, here, <laughs> here's a palmatum for you. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you certainly have enough uh, material if you want to air layer. Or... Oh, yeah. This is a real rough bark, Japanese. Yeah, thing. this is a pine bark. A pine bark. I got this from Valavanis. He donated oh, this right. to the garden as a little thing when I started 30, 30 years ago. Okay. Well... And this is this is my only quaking aspen. Probably okay. <laughs> doesn't remind you of a quaking aspen, but but there it is. Amazing. Populus tremuloides. In you collected it in okay. Wyoming. Yeah. Wow. Off of amazing. Yeah. I didn't think they lived that long. Uh, it's an odd to show you when you walk out. I'll show you my old angler maple. I don't really know. How old? Uh, here's my first bonsai. Way back in 1957. You go fine. It used to be 
It used to have a tree that uh, that went all the way out, but it slowly died off over the years. And now <laughs> I have a cascade. Now, now, well, that's a, as it gets old, it goes into this tumbling posture. Yeah, well, <laughs> well there we go. Guys, my age are having to deal with that. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. It's just yeah. the gravity of life. Yes. Pulls you down. Going down. <laughs> you guys don't know anything about that. Right. But, uh, Amazing. Wow. So and one of the things that I uh, that I do that's kind of special is I never repot my trees. Yeah, never do it. It kills trees. Just don't do it. And and tell me a good reason to do it. In nature, it doesn't happen. And I find stunted trees growing under crack in the rock, and they were never happy, but they look fabulous. And so if you want vitality, figure out how to root prune and not kill it, because you shorten the roots, you get this. But I don't want this on any of my trees. I want this. Right. And so they never get repotted. And I know it's really, um, wow, that's kind of deep and daring in the face of everything. But that's just the way I do it. And so I'm kind of living proof that you can go at least for 65 years and not repot your trees. Wow. And, and everything's going to work. And I still got my original ones. I've got, I've got a, one at home that's a little bit older than this one that I started with. And, and do you do candles? Do you do those? I uh, sporadically. Sporadically. Yeah. They all get Miracle Grow, mm -hmm. except for the mountain hemlock. So every plant in here gets it, you know. And they all get happy with it. And I do it until about mid July, starting maybe in April or something when growth kind of mm -hmm. visually starts happening. And try to do it every couple of weeks. And it's a hot mix, but my soil is that friable stuff and it just goes right out so it's a it's an hour long drink right then it's gone yeah. so nothing to it and down here is probably my my most famous black pine of all i've got a bunch of stuff around but look at this guy here <laughs> and look at the nabari on that isn't that oh, oh that is that looks like it came know what to do with it when it went back to the national collection <laughs> yeah what is it is this a spruce it's yeah that was the first thing is this some kind of a spruce <laughs> <laughs> and then they figured out well, wow. then they set it up backwards yeah and then they, they, well open. and this is yeah. the side you know that i wanted it to show it uh, because the front is the other the other side because the head leans towards the viewer right yes That's the yes, yes, yes but it's not nearly as dramatic as this side but it's okay i didn't know oh the, the original head leans toward the viewer here doesn't it <laughs> yeah it does yeah. it used to be headstrong here and then <laughs> what a great nabari and it looks like something you just plucked out of Ritsuran garden you know in takamatsu you know just yeah. pulled it out and brought and it I, here i <laughs> carved a, i carved a redwood stand for it and that it hides it. half of the thickness of the pot so mm -hmm. it, it sits down into the stand I see. So you don't see quite so much pot. I'd like to have it in a, in a thing about this deep, you know, about four inches, not six, just because it's a bulky. Mm -hmm. But it's happy in there. Yeah, so. the, the balance is good, I think. I don't know. I, I agree. I, well, that's that point, it's that quarrel that goes on. That's why I planted on a lava rocks slab. Mm. Then there'll be no dispute. This is my uh, big no cork oak down here. Wow. Cut it oh, down oh. there for the winter. Yeah. Really? Out of a cove in Alaska. What's a cove? A cove is a protected oh, cove. kind of a bay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was that much erosion, I thought. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, all of these. My glacier from... might have helped. Yeah, but they're so close to the Arctic, to the soil. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that bothered me. Yeah, well, how, how did it have time to get? Well, yeah, it only went, went this far, and much. everything else is polished, right? Or, yeah, this is an old lodgepole, and I'm going to kill the rest of the top off except for this corner here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what I thought when bit, I looked at it. A little bit too abundant. Yes. I mean, the tree is about this. Yes. And yes. so lodgepoles are fabulous, but boy, you got to prune them right, and you need to just cut the candle in half early on. Just in half. Yeah. Leaves, 
stubble the new needle. Yeah, yeah, you cut them get, off, you, you, you end nothing. up with a dead stub. <laughs> yeah. It that's lasts right. for as long as the needles are alive. I know. Well, you know, there's one that I've got down here that's really a great tree, and there's all this stuff that's going to be dead in a couple of years. Because <laughs> I didn't front it right. The book is going to be given away for the YouTube a group that gets involved in studying bonsai and should give you a license to do all sorts of things that you wouldn't normally do. <laughs> <laughs> you said it for me. Thank you. Yeah, so this uh, really wonderful book was oh, sorry. kind of interesting, but it was written about me. So uh, Written by you? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't written by me. Okay, about, written about you, me that's true. Yes. By uh, this Hiltz? wonderful guy, Will Hiltz, and uh, he's a great bonsai guy, and it's a fabulous bunch of stuff, but it's an interesting story. So, hey, enjoy. Thank you very much. That's it, folks, for the tour of Dan Robinson's garden. For those people that enjoyed it, uh, leave your comments, uh, subscribe. We're going to be giving away a free autographed book.